And I'll finally pick up what Philip Schoeller said. Is he still around? Yeah, okay. Because uh, I felt quite inspired by what he said. So let me go, uh, run through the story. And now we have to create a cinema atmosphere because you have to really watch this movie here, which has incorporated billions of data. And it's the story of how we became what we are today. It's the story of human civilization and the modern age, but not in terms, you know, I call it the sea story of human civilization, not the history. It's not the story of battlefields and beautiful princesses and dragons and, you know, the usual history. It's not the Game of Thrones. It's the development of the industrial metabolism of this planet. Uh, through the emissions of CO2, and what you see there is actually down there, the color coding means these are the cumulative carbon dioxide emission from each and every pixel on this planet since 1751. You can imagine, that's quite a task to put that together. Uh, and whenever the color changes, you have a tenfolding of the cumulative emissions. So it's a logarithmic scale, uh, but it's very, very important. So let's get started. And it does not start. So let me see again. Now it starts. Uh, that's always the suspension. Cliffhanger thing, uh, but it works. So, uh huh, but it doesn't go on. Interesting. Ah, now it goes. So, watch out. The only colored spot on this planet is the UK here, uh, Scotland and England, which had to resort to coal because we had cut down all the forests. Uh, so, you had to use this ugly material called coal if you want to have a chimney. Uh, fed with coal, it's, it's quite an unpleasant thing, actually. So you see, still, it's only England and Scotland. And what is the second country in the world that will switch to? It's Germany, uh, actually. And the third one is Poland. So if you think of why are the Polish so obsessed with coal, uh, they are the third to join the party here. You see it now on the other side of the Atlantic, uh, America, Europe, driven by the textile industry, actually, yeah? so carbonization was driven, industrial revolution was moving forward. You see nothing in Africa, nothing in Australia, nothing in Asia or Latin America until the British Empire will kick in. So India will appear on the map, New South Wales and a few other places. So now we are in the 1850s and now India is appearing, as you can see, for the British Empire. But in Europe, in old Europe, Germany is now developing into a second carbon power. Eh? And it will catch up in color with the UK soon. Now you see Russia, New South Wales, as I have said, South Africa will appear, Argentina, and so on here. And we are moving towards the First World War. And the First World War, in my view, was in particular a clash between carbon powers, yeah? because how do you create wealth and fortune? So we are approaching, you see Germany is turning red now. Now the First World War starts, now it ends, but the tensions have not been released. So Hitler will soon take power in Germany in 1933, and Germany keeps on, through military and everything, keeps on developing into a carbon power. Japan has now joined the party. And together with Germany is fighting, you know, the Allied forces. We are through the Second World War. And now what is starting is the age of globalization. Not because of coal, because of cheap oil from the Middle East, because the geostrategic situation has been completely changed. Huh? And now we are in the middle of the globalization. You see the Industrial Revolution rages on, creeps into every part of the planet and think. And now finally, the new carbon power emerges, China. And within just two decades, these are cumulative emissions, within just two decades, China is catching up actually with old Europe. And so you see it will turn red now. The whole thing stops, I guess, in 2013 or something, or 2011. And now you see the map of the world. That is the industrial metabolism of our planet. 
And if you would now look at where is wealth, where is population density and so on, it perfectly fits that type of emissions chart. Eh? And now you could ask, what is the future of development? Should the whole planet turn red? And when we are done, yes, when we are done, because when our climate will be completely destabilized. But we are on track already in this regard. So let me see if I can move it forward. Yes, so this is what you probably have seen, the, the weekly line since 1880, since we have instrumental records, how the global mean temperature is going up. And you see it's going up and up and up, and you have a few wiggles, Pinatubo, volcano eruption, that slight cooling because of the air pollution. In an El Nino event, we just had a massive one. It's accelerated in a La Nina phase. It may go down a little bit, uh, but all in all, it's moving upwards. Uh. And the last three years, actually, were always record years. If this would be a stationary climate, the chance of that would be one in a million. So if you still think global warming is not happening, when you should rather go to a lottery, actually. So let me go on here. And so what are we going to do? We go to Paris and have a nice summit. Uh, and you see the jubilant mode. In the end, uh, I was there too. So sorry, I get back to that. And you see, in particular, what Ernst has already mentioned, there was an agreement to limit global warming to well below 2 degrees and to even aspire for 1.5 degrees warming. Now, as a physicist, I'm on the one hand absolutely pleased with that. On the other hand, I'm frightened to death because it's a little bit like if you would just by law prohibit earthquakes bigger than 7 on the Richter scale. Eh? <laughs> and whether nature will comply with that, we don't know. But in particular, these are not the forces of nature, it's the forces of humanity, yeah? the Trumps and the like. So can we really hold that line? That's the question. Why should we hold it? I also introduced, Ernst, as you know, this uh, notion of tipping elements, tipping points in the Earth system. This is the chart, this is the physiology of our planet. These are the vital organs, the jet stream, the thermal line circulation, the big ecosystems like the Great Barrier Reef, the ice sheet and so on. And actually, if we heat up the planet, we will not have one big bang. Rather, vital organs will be collapsed, or pushed into a different mode of operation uh, as we go. And I'll show you how this will happen, actually. So, if we have 1.5 degrees warming only, now we have one degree, we will lose practically all tropical coral reefs. Uh? And if you ever had a chance to snorkel in a tropical reef, it's one of the miracles of the world. Eh? They will be gone with 1.5 degrees warming already. The next one, the Greenland ice sheet, worth 7 meters of sea level rise. We think that it will start melting around 1.6 degrees. And you can go on. And this is the summary, actually. I just published